Good evening and welcome to our last episode of Golden Eagle Sports Report of 2020. Tonight will be our basketball preview show where we give you everything you need to know about both the men's and women's basketball teams as their seasons start right around the corner. Although both teams are looking a lot different from last year, this season is sure to bring much anticipation. So get ready Marquette Nation because Golden Eagle Sports Report starts right now. Jeannie Hayes Virtual Studio at Marquette University. This is Golden Eagles Sports Report. Marquette gets the rebound, and the champions have gone down! Hello everyone, I'm Kristen Parisi. And I'm Andrew Muzu. With the November 25th start date fast approaching, the 2020-2021 season kicked off with both teams adding adding promising talent to their respective programs. And starting with the men's team, new additions Dawson Garcia and DJ Carden are two standouts from the new group of players that will provide an immediate impact. And as the new group develops, they will be led by an eager group of seniors that will take them under their wings. Although the senior class only consists of Kobe McEwen, Theo John, and Jamal Kane, Shane Hogan found out their impact on the court is just as strong as it is off the court. 2020, a year of uncertainty and constant challenges has created a new landscape for college basketball. For the Marquette Golden Eagles, they will need to rely on the leadership from their seniors, Theo John, Kobe McEwen, and Jamal Kane. Now that Marcus Howard and Sakar Annam have graduated. Of course, with Marcus being a great vocal leader and Sag being a great leader by example, we just try and, you know, um, mix that into all of us, you know. Um, if Kobe's a good vocal leader and I'm a good leader by example leader, I try and be a better vocal leader and Kobe try to be a better example. So we try to, you know, pick stuff from each other, you know, try and learn in, in that aspect and just, you know, try and be a better person and better leaders as the days go on. This will be a much different looking Marquette team come November 25th when they take the court for the first time. But for the senior class, the goals remain the same. You know, of course win, but um, win the Big East, you know, that's always been a goal of mine and Theo since we've been here. Um, and just try and go out, you know, as winners, you know what I mean? Like, no one wants to go out as losers. Just want to go out knowing that we competed and gave it our all for this program. Head coach Steve Wojciechowski reflects on how the senior class has impacted the program and hopes they have one final run left in them. I've seen them grow in ways on the floor, and I've seen them grow in ways off the court where they're really good men right now. And uh, they represent our program at a high level. Um, they've impacted our program at a high level. And, and um, you know, I'm hoping that they've all saved their best for last. And even though this will be a senior season unlike ever before, Kane and the rest of the class are trying to make the most of it. Uh, we just try and live in a moment. You know, not think about stuff happening in the past, not think about stuff that's going to happen in the future. Trying to stay in the present moment and try to make the best out of every moment that we have together. So I think that's kind of our main focus now, just because we know things are not the same as they usually be. So that's kind of the things we try and focus on and the coaches try and help us, you know, stay level-minded with. I'm Shane Hogan, Marquette Wire Sports. And even though the team is returning a majority of its players, their game plan going into the season will be different than in years past with the team losing some key starters. They will absolutely feel their biggest blow in losing the Big East all-time leading scorer, Marcus Howard. Zoe Comerford has a story. Talk about Marquette men's basketball without mentioning one name. Zero. For the first time since 2016, there won't be a number zero suiting up for head coach Steve Wojciechowski. You don't replace him on the floor with one player. That would be impossible. You don't plug in another 26, 27 point a game score. What you do is you have to, you have to take up those losses collectively. And in that respect, there's some exciting things to that. I think we can be a more balanced team. You know, we'll look different. In, in, on both ends of the floor than we did with Marcus. And 
Uh, time will tell if that's better, uh, but we'll certainly look different. For Villanova head coach Jay Wright, preparing his defense for Howard wasn't easy. You know, I haven't really looked at film of them yet, but I can tell you, it was a nightmare watching film getting ready for them with Marcus Howard. He was one of the toughest guards. He and Miles Powell were just so difficult to prepare for. It makes a, a, a major difference. You know, balance is good, but having a great player that's unstoppable is really good too. Without the program's leading scorer controlling the offense, Marquette must rely on more than one guard. DJ, Greg, Samir, um, Dexter, you know, we have a lot of um, guards that bring a lot of different things to the table. Um, and that, that would just give us different looks offensively and defensively. And that's something that can only help us uh, win games. So I'm, I'm really excited for it. For Marquette Wire Sports, I'm Zoe Comerford. And an all-time great for sure. We now want to welcome in Zoe Comerford to give us deeper insight of the team this year. So Zoe, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So let's just get to it. It seemed like every possession last year, the main goal was to get Marcus the ball and get out the way and let him work. So um, will this team look to have another primary score or will it be more evenly distributed? I mean, Steve Wojciechowski said it best on media day. He said, N you can't replace Marcus Howard with just one player. It has to be balanced, it has to be distributed. And I think that's something that Marquette men's basketball is going to need to do. They're going to use DJ Carton. They're going to need to use Greg Elliott. They're going to need to use Kobe McEwen. They're going to need to use every guard out there to get the job done because you don't have Marcus Howard. You don't have someone who could just ha handle the ball like he did. You don't have that lead scorer and you don't have the 72nd player to get to 2,500 points in the NCAA. Away, that you just don't have that luxury so you really need to use other guys and really distribute the wealth and Kobe McEwen might be one of those guys and he played a crucial role in being an additional playmaker for the team alongside Marcus and Sakar Annam so how do you see him having more control over the offense in his final season this is his redshirt senior year, so I really expect him to really step up, and I think he will. He played 28.6 minutes per game last year. He started in 29 games. He was really that second guard, and he tried to give Marcus the ball. He had 3.2 assists um, per game, and he was really impressive with just distributing the ball, but I think this year he really needs to take that leap and actually score. He only scored 9.5 points per game last year, so I really see him working on his playmaking abilities and using this time to really be the one to be the top scorer. And you mentioned the newcomers. Among the newcomers, who do you see being the team's number one option for the future? I mean, I think Dawson Garcia will oh, be yeah. that player. Big I mean, name. he's 6'11", he's a forward, yeah. and honestly, he was picked preseason Big East freshman of the year, and I think he would really live up to that. He's a very impressive player, and even Steve Wojciechowski said he brings that competitiveness, he brings that energy, and they're really looking to him kind of not only this year in his first year, but really in the future, him being that that big man under the basket. And it's going to be really hard to fill the shoes of Marcus Howard. So um, do you also think that along with them losing Sakar Annam, Brendan Bailey, Jace Johnson, Ed Morrow, do you think that this team is going to have some early struggles early on with them losing their biggest contributors? Andrew, I think that that's the biggest question. I think yeah. it's really about team chemistry. They just had that 14 day yeah. quarantine and they, uh, Steve Wojciechowski said they were rusty. And I think that's something that they need to work on is that team's chemistry because they have all these newcomers. They have these guys who don't know their plays right now. And they really need to get that on, you know, cause they have a really hard December schedule. So I'm thinking they're really gonna need to get that team chemistry to where they want it to be. If they're gonna play Villanova December 23rd. Yeah, And you mentioned one of those key playmakers, DJ Carden could be one and he's obviously coming from Ohio State. Do you think he's kind of feeling some new nerves, even though he's a junior? Yeah, I think he is feeling those nerves, but again, he's coming from a big conference in the Big Ten, and he's coming into right. the Big East, and I think he will play a huge role in Marquette's offense and, you know, productivity. He had 10.4 yeah. points per game for Ohio State, so I really think that he'll be a huge addition to this Golden Eagle squad. All right, Zoe, great knowledge, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you later on the show to talk more about this upcoming season. But after the break, we will transition to the women's team as they are seen as one of the top teams in the Big East this season. Golden Eagle Sports Report will be right back. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. 
when I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. Welcome back to Golden Eagle Sports Support. Once again, I'm Andrew Muzu. And I'm Kristen Parisi. Another season for Marquette women's basketball is just eight days away. And with their promising season last year ending shy of a Big East title, the team is now striving to remain at the top of the conference this coming season. With addition of exciting first years, Rose Nakumu, Liza Carlin, Dania Middleton, and Juliana Okasen, the future looks bright for Coach Duffy's squad. Along with the first years, Duffy says they will also lean on key sophomores like Jordan King, Cameron Taylor, and Taylor Valaday to provide leadership for the younger class. And although the team is young, Duffy believes they can still be a threat in the Big East. And as I found out, these young players are ready for the challenge. Coming into the 2020-2021 season, one word to describe the Marquette women's basketball team is young. But while young, this team is no short of talented. Incoming sophomores Cameron Taylor, Jordan King, Narelle Lubo, and Claire Capus all saw action last year and made a significant impact on a Big East title run. Sophomore guard Jordan King said her and her fellow sophomore teammates are ready to step up to the challenge and help lead their team to success once again. I think we're just going to be a really big part of the team in different ways um, regarding leadership, um, different positions, obviously, and just different things we all bring to the table. You know, we're all different players in our own ways. Even with the strong sophomore class, Duffy is bringing in talented first years, Liza Carlin, Juliana Okasen, Rose McKinney, and Daniel Middleton to help complement this already strong program, and she is excited to what they have already brought to the table. Coach Duffy isn't the only person in the program who has been impressed with these first years. Sophomore guard Jordan King also spoke on how she already likes what she sees from her fellow teammates. You know, I'm really proud of them and the strides that they've made so far and, and continue to make. So I think just them being, you know, hard workers and, and being coachable is just going to be what, what it takes for that group to continue to develop as it was our group last year. First year forward, Liza Carlin spoke on how she's been adjusting well to the college pace along with her new teammates. She says the versatility the and different talents amongst the first years will prove to be important Bradley. to being able to produce for the Golden titles. I think every one of the freshmen can contribute something different, which I think is huge for us. Um, I think that we're a really versatile group when it comes to what we can do on the court. So hopefully um, it's just about doing what we know and doing what we're good at um, and sticking to it. Kristen Parisi, Marquette Lab Sports. Just a year ago, Marquette was picked to finish ninth in the Big East preseason coaches poll. However, the women's team stormed to second place finish but their Cinderella season came to an end after losing to DePaul in the Big East title game. And after a successful campaign under Coach Duffy's first year as head coach, the Golden Eagles find themselves projected to finish third in the Big East, Big East this season. Tyler Peters caught up with the team to see how they're responding to these new expectations. It might not yet be a new year, but it is a new season for Marquette women's basketball. <laughs> The Golden Eagles carried an underdog mentality all of last season after being picked to finish ninth in the Big East preseason coaches poll. The same is true this year. Um, you know, we're still we we're picked third, um, and we're going to take it and run with it um, as if you know we we're picked ninth. So it, I think to us, it's just to keep keep coming to practice and grinding every day and getting better. How can we get better? How can we keep that Marquette standard? After losing Altia Anderson and Izzy Spangola to graduation, it's still not clear yet who will be taking their place. I'm still figuring it out as we finally get to practice a little bit more. But yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll do some different lineups, um, you know, trying to incorporate the young kids. I really like um, Chloe Murata, who's one of our upperclassmen now who, you know, we used her a decent amount in, inside. And this year we're, we're trying to move her out to the perimeter at that guard spot. 
Claire Kafis um, has filled into Izzy's role in some ways of being able to shoot the basketball and stretch defenses. And, and then um, Taylor Valaday is another one who is going to help us with time at the point guard position um, so we can kind of maybe shift Jordan King around a little bit more. The team hopes to pick up from where they left off. We're just trying to build on what we, you know, created last year and just keep going strong. But I think, you know, you can't really focus on too much of what the story was last year. It's, it's a new team. It's, an, it's a new season. So we're really excited to get started. I'm Tyler Peters, Marquette Wire Sports. And to get more insight on the women's basketball season, we welcome in the one and only John Leuzzi. <laughs> John, welcome back to the show. Andrew, it's great to be back. So obviously we've talked about the new the newcomers in the first years that Coach Duffy was able to bring into the program this season. So John, who do you think will be the standout first year for the Golden Eagles? To be honest with you, Kristen, I think that's a really hard question because we haven't been able to go to practice yet. We haven't been able to see exhibition games, but right now on print, I think it has to go back to Liza Carlin. And you see all of her accolades, great player in Minnesota, yeah, definitely. but 16.2 re points per game, 10.2 rebounds per game last year as a senior Ooh. and scored way, Andrew, believe it, over 2,000 points in her high school oh, career. Oh, Lord, but on top of that, lot. bringing it to the AAU level, she played with the number one recruit in the country, Paige Buckers, who's at UConn. Okay. So that's gonna the be competition she's yeah. been able to experience, I think it's going to be really helpful for her and to bring that to the Golden Eagles. Definitely. Better watch out for her. Yeah, yeah. It's right going to be interesting having them play together yeah. two times in the season. You yep. just got to see. Yeah, Somebody got to definitely. bring their popcorn. It's going to be a show. That's I'm right. excited. And with the team being so young, how important are the first years and the sophomores to the team's success? Well, I think it's very big. And you look at the roster, and 50% yeah. of this team is that sophomore <laughs> in the first year class. But let me, I'm going to talk about that, the sophomore class. And they were really thrust right into the fire last year when yeah. you lose six seniors, multiple 1,000 point scorers, and you know, they were really put in a lot, a lot of trust on this team. So they got to experience a lot of great things. And one of those is Jordan King and Cameron Taylor. They've seen a lot. But talking to Jordan King this past week, and she's saying that the amount of experience that she had last year, she can see the just the benefit of that right, right. now inside of practice. So I, I'm, I think King's very poised for a big oh, yeah. season for the Golden Eagles yeah. and Cameron Taylor too. Yeah, I definitely think that both of them and also Taylor Valaday mm -hmm. and Claire Kafis are going to yep. bring back yeah. a lot to the Golden Eagles. But let's move from the younger core to mm -hmm. how crucial will the leadership of veteran players like Selena and Lott and Lauren yeah. Van Clunen be to the Golden Eagles this season? I think they're big, and the reason for this is the relationships they've been able to build with the younger classmen. Selena Lott spent a lot of time with Jordan King last year. I can say that Selena Lott taught Defense 101 with Jordan King, and you saw how she was able to learn. Jordan King said the thing that she learned the most from Lott last year, competitiveness. And we saw that from her performance. But Lauren Van Clunen, a great mentor for players like Cameron Taylor, and she's going to be able to be with, with Liza Carlin and Danielle Middleton and all the newcomers. But I think there, anything, anytime you talk about two great veterans, Ooh, yeah. you have to go back to them. But don't be surprised to see some veteran leadership from Chloe Murata as well. She's a junior on this team. And Chloe Murata, big, yep. big veteran right there. So. The coach said that, hey, she might be in the starting yeah. lineup. So talk about her role this upcoming season. I think, you you know, Chloe, she started last year for the team in the first couple games. Right. And once we got to Big East, she saw her, her role differently. Yeah. But Coach Duffy trying to move her out and around the perimeter position mm -hmm. as a guard. Yeah. But I think the thing that we will be able to see from Chloe is they're going to be able to use Jordan King a little bit different, mm -hmm. which could help Chloe Murata. In, yeah. in her position right. underneath the basket. Right. Maybe we could see a little bit of an Altia Anderson role from Murata this senior. Yeah, I'm excited to see all of them go into action and hopefully compete once again yep. in the Big East title game. So thanks for the insight, John. It was great having you on the show. Great to be here. And when we get back, we'll be discussing all things Marquette basketball. So don't go anywhere because GESR will be right back. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. 
this is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Tonight, he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago, in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps. Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. You told me not to talk to strangers. You told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? And we are back in Studio 7, where we will be talking all things Marquette basketball. Joining me on our panel tonight is the one and only, the staple himself, Matt Yazel, Zoe Comerford, and John Layuzzi. So let's just get started. We've been talking a lot about what this current men's team will look like, but let's just take a step back, okay? Let's, let's think of some all-time greats of the program. That's right, it is time for some Mount Rushmore picks. All right. Matt, start us off. Well, I appreciate you calling me a staple, and I'm going to yeah. start with a few guys who I think are staples in Marquette's Mount Rushmore. I'm going to begin a little more recently. I'm going to say Marcus Howard. I think, you know, maybe you could argue, you know, he didn't win any tournament games, so we didn't yeah. see him in those later stages, but you can't deny the stats that he put up. Marquette's all-time leading scorer, the Big East all-time leading scorer, yeah. obviously had a huge influence on this program. Uh, next, I'm going to go Dwayne Wade as well. Fantastic two-year run put up a ton of points, led his team to the Final Four. The last time this program has been to the Final Four. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to a while ago when Al McGuire was a head coach, and I'm going to say Bo Ellis uh, put up double-digit oh, yeah. points all four years in his career, was the only player at Marquette to be in two separate Final Fours, and even almost 50 years after his career has remained a huge influence on this Marquette program. And finally, a guy who I think is a little under underappreciated, I'm going to say Butch Lee. He was a starting guard for Al McGuire. Uh, mm -hmm. He put up 20 points a game in the championship year in 77. And how did he follow that up? With a National Player of the Year season. Still Marquette's one and only National Player of the Year. And he put up 18 points, five assists that year. So I think he's one of the greatest players to ever wear a Marquette jersey. Great picks. Well, I'm going to disagree with Matt there. And I can be all sweet and all say Marcus Howard and, you know, all the accolades. But I'm not going to go there, Andrew, here. And I'm going to say my number one. The one and only Al McGuire. You can't talk about Marquette oh, basketball with Al, Al McGuire. He's the only coach that has won a national championship here at Marquette. Another one, Jarrell McNeil. Maybe a little bit under the radar before Marcus had the title. He was the one who led it, and he has another couple records in the, in the history book. Travis Diener is going to be another one. He, it might be, you might, you might shake your hands here, but oh, he, led, he, led wow. the he was the captain on that Final Four team with D. Wade, and, you know, you saw, you saw that shot in the summer, right? Oh I think he's up gosh. there in the Mount Rushmore. 
And then the final one, I think I'm going to have to go with Bo Ellis. But just because he, his impact that is right now on the team still, even though great accolades as a player. Hey, listen, we're talking about college basketball, not some middle-aged men <laughs> playing uh, basketball. There we go. No. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing like YMCA guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Uh, Anyway, let's just bring it to Zoe. <laughs> all right. Well, Enough I'm going to take this. a little bit of what both of you guys said. I mean, first of all, Marcus Howard, you know his stats yep. and everything. Nefty. And, I mean, he's he has three of four 50-point games in Big East history, which is pretty impressive. So, yeah, I'm going to take him at number one. And then, two, I will also go with Bo Ellis. I mean, he was a very yeah. impressive. And he's also still an ambassador for the program. And going back to what Matt said, he was the one of two – he was the only player – to um, go in two national championship games. And yeah. he was telling me when I was interviewing for him for the Marquette Journal, he was saying, like, that's what I pride myself on, is that mm -hmm. I'm the only player to do right. that for Marquette. And then three, I'm going to go also with Darrell McNeil. I think he, before Marcus, he was the all-time leading scorer, so I would have to say him at three. And four, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to say, I mean, I think Joe Chapman, because honestly, oh he... Okay, he might have not done oh a lot when he was in college, but he won the TVT this summer for the Golden Eagles. So oh I think gosh. I'm going to go with him. <laughs> I, mean. I, I think we might as well just move on to the next one. I mean, Coach <laughs> Lee is number six all time. But anyway, switching gears, we're going to the women's program. They have had a new newcomer come to the league, but this is not a high-level recruit. It is one of the most successful basketball programs in the history of the sport. The, U the UConn Huskies are now rejoining the Big East Conference, setting up what should be some great matchups with the Golden Eagles. How do you think of this new addition, and do you think it'll impact Marquette? I think it's a great addition to, to just not Big East basketball, but to the competition Marquette is going to face. And when Zoe and I attended Big East Women's Basketball Media Day early in October, and all the coaches went asked, like, what do you think of UConn coming back? He said, you can't talk about Big East basketball without the Huskies. Can't. And you, you know all the, the national championships, the Big East title records that they have. So when you talk about Big East basketball, they're the staple of it. And I think it's great competition. And the Big East itself, Andrew, we see year in and year out great competition from the board. So I think this is a great direction for Coach Duffy's team to play the not only the best team yep. in the country, but Gino Uriema, the GOAT team. as the coach. Oh, but yep. great players as well. One of greats. In, ter in terms of UConn, I mean, I'm going to go out and say they're the Duke of women's basketball. Mm. Ooh, I think, big take, and big honestly, take. I think they went 118-0 in, in the AAC in their seven years, um, when they were in their, that for seven years. And yeah. I think they're going to provide huge competition for the Golden Eagles this season. And Matt, I know you got a lot to say, but we're going to head on to our final topic here. The both the men's and women's teams are looking a lot different this year. So who do you think is going to have the better season? Well, I think there's just too much uncertainty with the men's team. I think they're going to need a lot more time to acclimate each or acclimate to each other and bring the newcomers in. Uh, so I'm going to go with the women's team. Women's I think team. Duffy has a great second year and gets them to the promised land. Men's and women's, John. Women's all the way. I'm also going women's too. Three for three. <laughs> These are some these are some hot <laughs> some hot takes. I don't understand. I mean, the men's team. You got Dawson Garcia. You got some newcomers. What, what's what's going on with that? I think it's just there's a lot to f see what this men's team has had. Right. So I think right. if you look at the past, I think the women's is there. And Megan Duffy said it perfectly. She's treated her team last year a lot yeah. like the juniors and the seniors. So they know what the competition is going to be like. Right. They know what practice is going to be held this year. I think that's going to help them in COVID times. And you know. It's, I, I'm, I'm excited to watch some women's basketball at the Al McGuire Center this year, Andrew. And they are no longer the underdogs, that's yeah. for sure. And thank you, everyone, for joining on this panel. And that is all the time that we have tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in all semester long. We'll be back in February with some brand new episodes of Golden Eagle Sports Report. Until then, stay safe and good night, Marquette. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm.